Hi everyone, how's it going today? My name is Amy and I'm with Sunshine Craft Co. I'm so excited. We've been going live every single week talking about a different project that you can do with some materials you have around the house. So today I'm going to be working on making some art prints, but something really fun, I'm going to be using vegetables to make stamps. I also have a few other household supplies um, that if you don't want to use your vegetables, you can use found objects around the house to create your stamps with. So first, I want to show you a few of the materials that I have. One, I have my vegetables. I have a knife and a cutting board. I'll just say up front that any vegetable cutting will be an adult's job. Now, uh, I'm using plain acrylic paint. So I've got a bunch of different colors and I have just a paper plate that I'm going to use as what I call my palette. Uh, and that is going to um, be what we're putting our paint onto before we stamp with it. Now, I also have a few items that I'm going to stamp on to start. I figured we would just do some plain paper just to show how the process works. And then I, I had some, um, these are postcards. So I have some postcards, which would be fun to create. I don't think I'll demonstrate this, but I thought it'd be a fun idea is if you wanted to take a paper plate or you can cut a circle from another item and you could create a rainbow out of your stamps. But the project um, I figured I would demonstrate would be to stamp onto a cut out Easter egg shape since we have Easter coming up this weekend. Okay, now other things to have on hand, um, scissors, if you're going to be working with some paper, I have some paper towels and I do have a brown piece of paper, which is going to be my surface covering. And I might also use it to prep my stamps. Now, let me get this cleared off. Um, I've got my piece of paper I want to stamp on and I'm going to cut something fun to start with. So I got this pepper. I'm going to see what it looks like when we slice it. And I'm going to use this bottom piece right here and see what we get. I'm going to pick, let's see, I'll pick this nice peachy orange color. I'm just um, giving myself a little paint on the plate. I'm not going to dip my vegetables into my paint. I'm actually going to take a brush and I'm going to brush it on. I could also, we'll see, this is all going to be experimentation, which is one of the things we love to do here at Sunshine Craft Co. We really value hands-on experiences and playing around with things. We think part of the fun is seeing what you're going to get. So I just took my brush. I placed some paint onto my cut pepper and I'm just going to push it right down onto my paper. Now you can see I got a little heart, which I think is super fun. I'm just going to play around with that. Maybe stamp it a few times. just to see what kind of patterns we're getting. Now, after I'm done with this, I am going to take my paper towel and I'm going to clean it off in case I want to use it again with another color. Now, let's see another really simple vegetable to use for veggie stamping is a potato. Now, when we cut a potato in half, I got these little guys and we get a really fun oval shape, which can be a good foundation for a lot of prints. Now, I just went ahead and I dabbed the water off of it a little bit because we really want the paint to stick to the surface. I have a bunch of different brushes and a lot of different paint colors. So I'm just going to use green next and put that onto my plate. I also have a lot of different brushes, so I don't have to clean them. 
Now I'm just gonna go ahead and paint on the surface of my potato again. And go ahead and press it down onto my paper to see what we get. Now I'm just gonna try to gently set it down, but then I'm going to press a little harder once it's in place. Ooh, and I love the texture that I got with that. So I could go back in with the same color. I could put more paint on it and give it another stamp. Now, I love that you can get ovals with potatoes, but what I also love is you can get a really easy half circle, like arch shape. So if I take this, um, I'm gonna set this one aside, but I'm gonna take the other half that I had and I'm gonna cut that one in half. And this gives me that um, half circle shape. So again, I'm just going to dab that off. I'll just go ahead and keep using that same green and paint it on. And see what we get with this. Okay. So you can see I got that half circle shape. I'm just gonna go ahead and do it right next to it again without adding more paint to see what we get. I love that. And then I'm just gonna go one more and see if we have any paint left on the potato. Oh, cool. So you can kind of see I've got one, two, three, right in a row uh, without adding any paint in between. So that's really fun to play around with. Um, I have been saving my favorite thing, celery. <laughs> and I wanted to show you how cool um, the bottom of celery can be. So my celery came with this rubber band on it and I'm gonna leave the rubber band so we can kind of get double stamp out of it and I'll show you what I mean. Hopefully it'll stay together, but I'm gonna trim it right underneath this rubber band. Okay, like I said, adult's job. And you can see this really wonderful shape I think it looks like a flower or a rose, and I wanna show you um, what this might look like when we stamp with it. Hi, Dory, good to see you. Yeah, veggie stamping is one of my favorites because it's such an explor explorative process of just seeing what you get, which I think is really fun to play around with. Okay, so I revealed my rose of my celery and I am going to dip my brush in the paint and I'm just gonna do a gentle light layer over the top. Now when I say gentle light layer, I'm just trying to get the surface of this. We don't want a lot of paint down in the different like crevices. We just want that paint to sit on top. Now, let's see what we get. I've got my paper right here. We're gonna flip it, set it down gently, but then I'm gonna press kind of firmly and wiggle it around to try to get all that surface area touching. Oh my word, I'm so excited. Can you see that flower? Oh, and we got some little extra juice. <laughs> I, um, like I said, this is my favorite stamp. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that again without adding any paint to it. If you're working on this at home, you don't have to lift it up and show the camera. So you won't get as many paint drifts as I do. But can you see how that makes such a pretty flower design? Um, okay, so I've shown you guys a few different veggies and how you can play around making stamps with them. I'm gonna now bring in a specific uh, shape or project that I might wanna stamp. So like I said, around the studio, I had these postcards. So you can see the back is ready to be mailed. You can also just cut down your own cardstock. You make cards, maybe pop them in people's mailboxes. Um, so I'm gonna show you maybe a design we could do with this. This one is what I'm working on. I'm just gonna dab it again to see if I can get some of that excess water out. And I loved that color we were using, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use that one again. Now, if you recall the first time I stamped with this celery, the paint 
was maybe a little bit more, is gloppy a word? Gloppier than I wanted it to be. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna stamp it twice. I'm gonna stamp it once on this piece of paper and then my, if you wanna say official postcard stamp, I'm gonna do it the second time here. So first time to get that gloppiness of the paint um, and then the second print is the one I want on the postcard. So like I said, just playing around. Um, okay, first one on the paper and then the second one I'm gonna do on my postcard. We'll just pick a corner spot and I'm just gonna press down and kind of wiggle it around to get all the surface areas to touch, pull it off, and I've got a nice flower shape in the corner of my postcard. So what we could do, let's play around. So we have this half circle. Now, we don't wanna to get too crazy with carving our potatoes, but Let's see if we can get a little bit of a leaf shape going on. Um, okay, so you can see I've got a smaller kind of half circle. I'm gonna use that with my green and maybe press on a few um, leaf petals, leaf shapes. Okay, so I've got my green on my potato. I'm gonna pick Let's see, I go up here, right onto my postcard. And then another thing which I was just gonna do is you can push, if you don't have brushes at home, or if you wanna play around with different ideas, you could just push this right into the paint. Now, if you're gonna do that, I would definitely recommend doing like a pre-stamp on a scrap piece of paper and then stamp onto your postcard. So let's pick another place. I don't know. I'm gonna maybe do some leaves in the corner. We'll put another leaf there. Now I'm just having fun. Brush on a little bit more paint. This is gonna be a really thin coat, so I'm not gonna do a pre-stamp, but I will push it there in the corner. Now, I have a really fun circle stamp, so I'm going to use that. And you could use a brush, you could use your finger, but we have these fun brushes, so I'm just gonna use it. Let me get a little bit more paint. Okay. So you can see I've got the color loaded onto my brush and I'm just gonna stick it like it would be a flower. And you can see that I added that little extra flower in the corner with my two um, potato stamped leaves. Now you could keep going with this. Um, like I said, it's a postcard, so I'm gonna set it aside to dry. And I'm gonna start working on my Easter egg. I wanted to, um, now you know I love my uh, celery flower and my potatoes, but I wanted to see, I got this um, mushroom. I wanted to see what that would look like. So I'm gonna cut that in half and I wanna show you guys how you can maybe combine some colors and do like a fade color. So I have that purple already out and that pink. So maybe those are going to be good colors to demo with. So I've got that purple color. I keep having to get more. I should just give myself a lot. I have that purple color on my brush and I'm just going to brush it on the top half of this mushroom. Now you see it's on the top half. I'm gonna take that peach color and I'm gonna brush it on the bottom half. Can you see that? And then I'm gonna go ahead and use this brush and I'm gonna start kind of going up and down and combining those colors to see if we can get them to fade into each other. 
I'm gonna get a little bit more purple and do the same, kind of trying to combine those. We'll see what we get. Okay, so now I'm gonna stamp onto my test paper first before I put it onto my Easter egg. Now you wanna gently press down. Some vegetables are gonna be more delicate than others, but I'll give it a little wiggle and pull it off. Now, okay, I don't like how much surface coverage, like there's a lot of white in the middle. So I'm gonna to try to place it back down exactly ish where it was. I'm gonna see if I can press that center down just a little bit more. It's kind of a delicate vegetable, so I wanted to be careful. I'm gonna kind of mush it a little and see if I can get that to fill in. I can't get it to fill in a ton, but you can see how we've got that different color play happening. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and use that for, I won't do the color fading on it for our Egg, but we'll start creating a little pattern here. Okay, so I'm just gonna pick, I'm gonna just do stripes of patterns. There's one, but what I'm gonna do with this is instead of going straight across, I'm gonna rotate the mushroom and do it the opposite way. And see if I can get two stamps, cool. And then re-up on my color a bit. and do two more. So one with the mushroom facing up, then I'm gonna flip that mushroom, do it facing down, and create a little pattern all the way across my egg. So you can see when you're working with a shape, I have it on this brown paper, so if I need to stamp and say the stamp is gonna fall off the edge, that the rest of the stamp is just gonna stamp onto the brown paper. Okay, we've got our green potato wedge going on. Maybe I'll do this same stripey pattern. Okay, we've got our potato, we've got green on it, and I'm gonna pick a place to do, maybe we'll go one, two, three up on a little bit of color and we can get four so then I'm gonna go ahead and do another row on top I just rotated my Easter egg and one I gotta press a little harder okay one two, three, let's see if we can get a fourth one. Ugh, pressing really hard to get as much of that paint onto the egg as possible. Now, I talked, said we, I was gonna try some other materials that aren't vegetables, so I have this prepped. So I just took some scraps of cardboard and I took hair ties because I couldn't find rubber bands and I just placed some hair ties over it, not only to hold it together, but this is actually what's gonna print. I'm gonna see if I can get stripes to print onto um, our surface. Now, what would be a fun color? I'm gonna use this. We've had a lot of studio debates about what color this is. Uh, I think we've all landed on aqua. So I'm gonna use this aqua color and I'm just gonna try to brush that onto the tops of these stripes. And I've never tried this to see if it'll transfer color. So we'll experiment together. Okay, so I'm gonna do a test print just so I can see what I'm gonna get. So I've got my sample sheet over here. I'm gonna press it down, push a little bit. Oh, look at those amazing stripes. So I think that's gonna work out great. I'm just going to brush a little bit more paint on it before I press it onto our Easter egg. And I'm gonna pick 
this bottom area to start with. So remember, I've got the brown paper under the egg. So if I go off the edge with my stamp, it'll be fine because it'll just um, stamp onto the brown paper. So we've got um, three stripes going this way and I'm gonna rotate my stamp so then I've got three stripes going this way. We'll see what that looks like. Press down. Oh, that's great. I love these stripes. Uh, just a little bit more paint and we'll go up again and then we'll go sideways again. You can see that pattern along the bottom of the egg. And I think I am just going to keep um, kind of symmetrically mimicking. So I'm going to do that pattern right along here. I'm going to start up and down. Let's see. Get a little bit more paint. Keep wanting to put my brush on the cutting board and I'm trying not to do that. Okay, I'm gonna go all the way across and we've got that layer done. Okay, so I have one more household item. I think a lot of people might have some toilet paper tubes and I am going to, you can just use it like this, but you might wanna do a couple different colors. So. You can just cut it and you can see if I pinch this edge then it kind of turns into a little leaf shape we'll see how much surface area we can get on that and again we can um maybe we'll just take this one I'm gonna just dip it straight into my paint and I'm trying to get all the edges can you see that um of my tube and then I'm gonna get my practice sheet and go ahead and set it down and press down to see we want all the surface areas to touch and you can see you get a nice little delicate leaf shape so actually I just had an idea um, I'm gonna press it right there and then I'm gonna kind of pinch it in see if I can get or just like wiggle it around and that can give you some fun texture and make it a little bigger. Okay, so I think I'm just gonna follow up quick with this Easter egg. Maybe we'll just go back to this pepper to finish off the top of our egg. But if you guys have any questions about the different processes that I'm working with or what vegetables you think would be fun to see the patterns of, uh, I think I've done Brussels sprouts before, which are really fun. They would do something similar to the celery they would kind of look like a floral um, element or a stamp i'm just going to take this and kind of do it on the top of this to finish our egg off kind of rotate it pressing down and then you've got your little easter egg print um, okay, so uh, to review, we just worked on making some art prints using vegetables as stamps. We used vegetables, acrylic paint, brushes, and then the surfaces that you can print on. This is cardstock. Uh, I also think it would be cool to cut a paper plate in half if you want, or even do like a circle design. It'd be really cool if you want to do like a mandala or something symmetrical on a circle. You could um, print on a lots of different items, but if you wanted to say cut out hearts to put in your window, um, cut out a rainbow to put in your window, um, but yeah, I'm so excited you guys joined me today to talk about this art process and I am excited to see you again next week. Thanks so much for joining guys.